Hi, and welcome to 3dmotive.com. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and I'm a senior character artist. In this little tips and tricks tutorial, we're going to take a look at creating custom alphas in ZBrush. Uh, we're going to look to just do the, the basic settings, basic parameters. This is your jumping off point. If you need to create some alphas, this is how you do it. You can get more sophisticated as you become more practiced with it, but we're just going to jump into doing something simple, something easy, but as quickly as, as possible, with as few steps as possible. Uh, because I know sometimes with ZBrush, like any program, if you're not used to it, some things can be confusing, and we want to try to keep it as simple as possible for you. So this is the the viewport in ZBrush. Obviously, I'm going to go to my document. I'm going to take the slider, and I'm going to change the range to zero. That actually just grayscales it. I, I don't like that particular gradient, and if you guys don't either, that's the way to get rid of it. I'm going to click on the simple brush tool. I'm going to grab Plane 3D. I'm going to left click and drag in my viewport. Okay. I'm going to hit T so I can edit it. And if it came in wonky or sideways, I can always hold down my Shift and left click drag in the background. That'll snap it very nicely. Okay. I'm then going to click on the Make Poly Mesh 3D button. I'm going to hit Control D. To subdivide, you can see here as I do this, I'm going to subdivide, 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 and I'm going to do it one more time. I like a million polygons because if I'm creating an alpha, I want it to be uh, as clean as possible, and I want to make sure I have enough polygons to support the details I'm going to create so that your alpha will look good on whatever you, you, you draw it onto or use it for, especially for the sculpting purposes. Okay, I'm going to go from the stroke uh, into the, the, the dots. This is the stroke. I'm going to go from dots to freehand. And in this case, let's just look at if I were going to look to make tentacle suckers, for instance. Uh, as you can see, I've got the mirroring on. And it's not... I'm going to turn the intensity down a little bit, turn off the RGB, and let's do something... You know, just get an idea of what we can do. We're going to do something really simple uh, with this. I'm going to add in a little, I'm going to turn off my X, I'm going to add in just this little bit here. I'm also going to get into my the H polish tool. I hit H, and that obviously goes right into it. I'm going to turn my, my uh, symmetry back on, X, and I'm just going to lightly hit that rim a little bit. You can see I'm just doing it. I'm not trying to be perfect on this. I just want to get something in there. Okay. I also want to, let's just go ahead and knock that down. I'm going to hold down my shift. We'll blend that out a little bit. I want to blend these edges a bit. Okay. Something really simple. Okay. Uh, it's not overly complicated. I'm going to go ahead and just zoom into it. And I did that by holding my alt left mouse and I let go of the alt and I can zoom in and zoom out. I'm holding on my left and I'm just pulling in and out. Just going to pull it in to about here. Going to go to Alpha. You want the uh, this transfer and you want to hit this button here, Grab Dock. Okay. See what it did right here? It just grabbed that little uh, the the sculpting I just did on that. See that it's it's now there. If I select my standard brush and go to the drag rectangle click that alpha there it is I can now just drag and there I go okay I can start to pull some of that in it's a little it's a it's not as intense as this because the intensity is down let's crank this up a little bit see there you go okay I'm gonna turn off my symmetry because what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab another plane 3d I'm going to make sure we select the Make Poly Mesh 3D, and I'm going to multi uh, divide that as well. So I'm going back up to about the one point, uh, just over a million polygons. In this case, I'm now going to just drag this out into different areas. Now, if I want to make this uh, so there's going to be suckers all over the place, I'm going to just do some random, uh, random placement. I'm also going to be changing some of the size on this. I'll just go ahead and do that. 
It's a little smaller. Get one that's a little, you know, you want some variation to the sizes on this thing, obviously. So it's best to just try and, and work some, some different locations and space them out a little bit. I'm going to do a little bit here. I'm going to do something big there. And I'm spacing them out. Okay, so you get something like that, for instance. Okay, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit, center it, and I'm going to go to Alpha, Grab Dock. Now, as you can see, we now have an Alpha that has multiple little suckers on it. Okay, now at this point, I can actually click to a Sphere 3D. I'm going to hit Control N to clear my canvas, and then left click and drag the sphere. I'm going to hit T to get into Edit. Okay, we're going to go ahead and make this a Poly Mesh 3D, and let's subdivide it. So we've got you know enough polygons to support what we're going to do. Actually. Two million is a little high. We can go for five, about five hundred twenty-five thousand, just just to take a look at what we're going to do with this. All right, we're in our standard brush. We're we're in the drag rectangle stroke. The alpha, we just click and go to our second grab. Okay, so there it is. Let's just click and drag. Rotate this around. As you can see, it's stretched a little bit up here because this is a curved surface. So if I had done a bit of a smaller drag, it wouldn't have done that quite as much. Yeah, there you go. And I can rotate it around. Now I can click and drag. I've, I've just left clicked and dragged, but I, as long as I'm, I haven't let go of that mouse, I can spin this around as I need to. If I don't like the placement, they came out too small, then I'll just place it again, and this time square it up a little bit. And again, because I've made some variations in placement and sizes of the the uh, little suckers, you can see where it starts to place really nicely, and yet looks like it's like you've actually done all the sculpting yourself. It's just one of those where you have to click and drag and play around with some of this stuff. If you don't like the placement on something, just Control Z it and go again. In this case, we'll get something about there. And as you can see, it's pretty simple. By the way. Just to show you the difference, you can use the dots. If you use the dots brush, what happens is it'll actually click it. If I just click and drag, that actually is like taking the tentacles and making it like it's a long uh, kind of comb <laughs> that I can drag through. Uh, you might want that as a particular effect for something. We obviously don't want something like that for this. Uh, I wouldn't suggest using something like that. You can go to the stroke and use this, this drag dot. Now the drag dot is really interesting. If you click on the th on the sphere, you see this? I can actually, I'm just left clicking and I've held it. I can zoom it around and spin it around and it doesn't become placed until I decide to let it go. But as you can see, let me let it go. So it's now placed, but you can see it's really tiny. That's because drag dots is really based on the size of your brush. And because my brush isn't very big, the, the inner circle, the outer circle is, is the relative effect. You know, it's, it's, it fades off. The inner circle is where it's going to be, you know, the hardest. But the problem is, is it's not very big. So if I use my, my bracket keys and scale the brush up on the fly, I can now grab something that's like th so I get a, a much nicer size, so it's bigger, and now I can literally click and drag to move it into a position that I like and then let go. I can also do it again over here. And by the way, I, you can actually spin, if you'll notice, I can actually spin this around based on uh, what I'm choosing to do, you know, what sort of placement I want, you know. And it's one of those things where you just, you, you'll get to learn how to use this a little bit better as you work with it, if you're going to work with the drag dot, uh, because you, you really want to make sure you line things up so it has a good uh, variation to the model. Now, obviously for this, the the uh, suckers are a little bit small in comparison to some of this, so I'm going to zoom out and try it again. And this time, oop, goes really big, so let's not go quite that far. I'm just going to left alt, drag it in a little bit. Let's just pretend we're doing something like this, okay? So anyway, you can see very quickly how to do just a, a base setup for 
what you want to try and do with your particular uh, alpha that you create. All right. Again, I tend to use, when I'm doing the alphas, I tend to use the drag rectangle for the most part. Now we can just drag it out and you can scale it and move it around the size you need. But I do know some people that use the drag dot quite, method quite a bit. Uh, I prefer the drag rectangle because it's better placement and I can move things exactly where I need it. By the way, once you're done with this, all you have to do is click on this alpha. You can click and export it, call it whatever you want to call it, like suckers, and it'll be a PSD. And you can create yourself an alpha library that you can then input anytime you want to be able to, to stick it on your models and add details as you need to. Anyway, that's about it. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been 3dmotive.com, and my name is Stephen G. Wells.